people uh, read lips, especially uh, deaf people read lips all the time. Oh, yeah. So that's, you know, when you take that away with a mask. Oh yeah, it's terrible. You're, you're taking away a lot of um, a lot of really useful information. Good evening, good evening. We are the three-headed Hydra, but we are missing a head this evening. Uh, Joshua William Dennison is having a battle uh, building, reforming, I don't know what the verb is, doing a loft at his home, so he's uh, otherwise engaged. But we'll, we'll keep a picture of Joshua William here on the side just to remind us. The three-headed Hydra is always... We miss him already. We do miss him already. All right. Mm. So go ahead, Sal. What's the topic today then, Brent? The topic is the effects of masks on communication. That's an interesting one. Very exactly. useful. It is, and apparently you have some facts to back that up, but maybe I can first give you um, my point of view on what I feel uh, or think masks have um, on the effects that masks have had on communication. So, uh, one obviously is when you wear a piece of cloth, you it's very very hard to understand what you're saying. Mm. Uh, it's a practical fact. So, there's a lot of information and both verbal and non-verbal information. So, it happens many times that I have to repeat what I'm saying or somebody else has to repeat uh, something, a clerk maybe, because they're not only do they wear masks, but maybe they're behind like a plexiglass thing too. And then there's some background noise and it's it's really terrible. I mean, more often than not, I see actually people then uh, taking off the masks quickly to tell you what they wanted to say, <laughs> which then also adds to some kind of a health risk. So I guess that's another thing on the, on the list. So lots of information, but gain of corona droplets, I guess. I don't know. Um, loss of precision. So it's not just that you lose information, but you also lose, since you lose the nonverbal parts, um, sometimes you miss the context of things. Mm. And that's connected to the next thing. I think there's a loss of empathy too, because it's really hard to understand actually if the person behind the masks is actually friendly <laughs> or or not. Like I, I went getting a rental car the other day and I was smiling behind my mask because the person behind uh, 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 working there, the clerk, she, she um, you know, I used to be a, a customer for years in that um, with that company. At first, she didn't even recognize me, so she treated me like everybody else, like shit. And then she realized once she saw me, my, once she saw my document on the on the on the computer, ah, it's you. And then she started being smiley and happy, you know. How do you know and she so, was smiling? Because she was not wearing a mask; she was behind oh, the plexiglass thing. But I was wearing the mask, mask obviously. So she could not read. Also, during our conversation, she could not read um, when I was, you know, smiling or, or doing a funny joke. Well, what I thought was a funny joke. <laughs> you anyway, should never rely you on never know. You should never smile you at your own jokes. You shouldn't have to see your mouth to find out <laughs> a good joke's funny. Right. Well, I'm not, I'm not a stand-up comedian, <laughs> unfortunately, or luckily, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, a lot, lot, lot of loss of information there. So, the human factor gets lost and it's hard to read information. The non-verbal information, obviously, very important. And the loss of time, obviously, too, because then you have to speak slower eventually or you have to repeat things uh, inevitably. So, yeah, um, and it creates a distance uh, between people, I think. And also it's a reminder, basically, seeing somebody with a mask of the times we live in, even though we get used to it. I think there's still this element of, you know, it's, this is a – I think I'm sure it – but it's my gut feeling. I, again, I'm talking out of my uh, gut feeling here. But yeah, that's that's in a nutshell, let's say, what I would say masks yeah. do to us in society and to communication. Sure. So so I'd split... So now hit it with facts. I'll try my best. So I'd, I'd split what you mentioned there. I agree with everything mm -hmm. that you said there, actually, quite boringly. But um, I'd split it into the, the speech perception side of things and then the okay. kind of... Um, emotional emotion perception side uh -huh. of things so speech speech perception was the topic of my last uh, master's essay and very briefly what i found is that the 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 motor theory of speech perception is more uh, viable there's several theories as there are for everything um let me see if i can explain it in a nutshell that we understand people's speech by recreating their motor movements um, in the part of our brain that 
create our motor movements if we were to make the same sounds. Mm-hmm. That makes sense? So you can do this just by hearing, which is otherwise a telephone conversation wouldn't work, would, would never have worked throughout history. You can do it just with the auditory sound, mm-hmm. but the, the movement gives you, give you many clues about the sounds that the other person is making that you then map on to your own, um, to your own brain, your own motor system. Um, so that's, that's kind of the theory of how we perceive speech. We recreate what we hear um, we, in our own in our own motor system, as I've said five times. <laughs> okay, so why is that relevant okay. to, to wearing masks? Um, there's a lot of research, of course, about the big difference between speaking without a mask and, well, okay, the research isn't specifically about masks, but speaking without having the visual clue, mm-hmm. uh, visual cue, and speaking with the visual cue. Um, there's, there's a really interesting effect, actually, called the McGurk effect, McGurk. And the McGurk effect. Have you heard of it before? No. I so, just like the word McGurk. Sounds funny. McGurk, yeah. M little C G U R K. Um, the McGurk effect is from the 70s. Um, and this experiment it, it gave the participants a mouth which was making one sound visually. And then the sound was um, a different sound. Mm. And so th- they put the visual and the acoustic onto, on, on top of each other. And so the, what was it? It's, it's like the, the, the mouth was making a pa, a pa, and the sound that the person heard was a ba. Mm. And then they heard a completely different sound from that. So they made, a different sound, but then the perceived sound was even different than the sound that was changed. So yeah, it was a third sound. Okay, interesting. So the brain was completely put off by this. I'm sorry. This yeah. Trick. So yeah, I'm just. I was just reading through quickly. So the sound was a b, a b, a b, and mm-hmm. the mouth was making a g. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, simultaneously, you had the mouth making a g and the sound of a b. And the hearer perceives a du, huh. du for Denmark, right? When you right. put these things together, it sort of confuses our wiring. Um, so that's a really interesting sort of. Isn't that how these guys work? Um, what do you call them? That um, I'm not sure what the English term is. You know, there's this art, this craft of people speaking with their lips. Bel- ventriloquist. That's one. Yes. <laughs> that's the one. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to repeat that word, but um, yeah, it's and don't they use this kind of technique where they emulate certain sounds, but they use different sounds, and then no, but but then that would it wouldn't work really because people don't don't see their lips actually move. So right, okay. Anyway, just a, <laughs> just 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 a wild a wild thought there. Yeah, but there's, I mean, there's a few other studies. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you if you play a participant a sound and then play the participant a sound with the visual. So in, 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 the, in the case that we're talking about now, having people with a mask is just the sound. Having the whole face is also the visual information. The, the recognition went from 23% with just the sound to 65% accuracy with the sound and the visual cue of the whole mm. face. Um, there's, there's many other studies like this. There's a lot of studies on lip reading. Of course, people le- p- people uh, read lips, especially uh, deaf people read lips all the time. Oh, yeah. So that's, you know, when you take that away with a mask. Oh yeah, it's terrible. You're, you're taking away a lot of um, a lot of really useful information. Um, so also some really interesting work with with brain scans. Mm-hmm. Um, and the more transparent the visual signal is, the faster the auditory signal is processed in the auditory cortex. Mm-hmm. So it's um, yeah, I mean it's like we said, we all have that kind of day-to-day experience and the intuition that I'm sure it makes a difference if I can see your face. Um, j- just referring to speech perception, and it's, it's backed up by the research. Oh yeah, uh, the tons of research with many different variants. 
Just a, a quick question before you move on. Um, what you mentioned in the beginning um, that we use um, verbal feedback to understand what the other person says, but you were mentioning that we also learn uh, to understand through that process, right? So, is it something that's more um, is it something that is is more important when you learn to speak as a child? And once you learned how to speak, it is easier for you to um, uh, talk to somebody over the phone or could we also learn to speak over the phone? In a sense, if you never yeah, saw somebody you, yeah, sure. um, speak. Good question. I don't have the, I don't have the answer to that. Mm. It's, it's a very good question, though. I don't know if the experiment would be ethical, though. You'd have to sort of deprive a child of from a, Fair from enough, a yeah. <laughs> you'd have to deprive a child of, of faces for the first. Yeah, maybe five AI to 10 gets years. gets good enough that we can just program it, yeah. it to find yeah. out. I mean, it, it's the the motor theory of speech perception is is imperfect. There's there's quite a few mm. holes in it. Mm. Okay. Um, like, for example, uh, the motor theory argues for a very specific speech processor in the brain. Mm -hmm. Um. Whereas other theories like the auditory theory says that, you know, there's, there, there aren't any, there aren't any missing elements. There are other problems with that, like, <laughs> like there are with, with all of the theories, but the, the motor theory is very specific in that there is a specific speech processor and, you know, with all of the, with all of the brain scanning techniques and everything at scientists disposal, they still haven't located this part of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's kind of, it's still being worked on, it's still being refined, but the, the general theory is, is, is there. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah I think, I think we all experience it, you know, we, I mean, you can, you can read academic journals. I mean, that, that Research was part of my my last master's module, um, but I think you just need to go outside and try to speak to people with masks, especially in a foreign language. I'm finding it really difficult, man, to understand people in Italian behind a mask, and I find it really difficult actually on the phone in any foreign language. Mm. To um, well, I don't, you know, of course, there's not an exact percentage that you lose each time because it will also depend on the person's voice who's, who's speaking to you, but there's definitely... Also, also on a topic, I suppose, what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely, how much vocabulary you know. But there's definitely a, um, a poverty of information when you just have the sound, mm. if the face is covered by a mask. And then your second point was really interesting, the, the emotional side of it, because I suppose mm. we do still have the eyes, right? So if you're winking at somebody, <laughs> you still get a little bit, but it's not that much. Well, okay, but if you're... If you're winking and you have like an angry face or like a, a maniac's face and you're winking, then it's a completely different wink than if you're if you are in a very relaxed, cool manner, uh, smirking at somebody or something. I don't know, you know, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, mm. And if you don't have feedback, if I'm smiling at you at the moment or if I'm really angry, I mean, my eyes can. Can't you smile with your eyes? Well, that's what I was was about to say. There's only so much you can smile with your eyes. It's it's really hard to tell sometimes. What if you're tired? How much can your eyes smile when you're tired, you know? Yeah, my eyes <clears> give <throat> me away. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you're right. And you, especially with strangers, I mean, the, you just, you, you, you miss out on all those clues. And if you're Italian, I mean... Most of our, most of our game is nonverbal communication. I mean, there are all these subliminary messages and gestures and um, hints that and uh, I mean, we still have the hands that we can use, obviously, and you know, all these these movements. That, yeah, thank God for the hands. Eh? <laughs> all these movements that we do. <clears throat> but I, I'd say so much communication gets potentially lost. Maybe not in Scandinavia, where people are, I assume, not as uh, expressive with either their face and or their body parts. Mm. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, I'm just Steady. throwing it out there. I'm just generalizing. I have no idea what I'm talking about. But so I, could ever, I could imagine that's the, that's the case there. Have you ever spoken to anybody with a see-through mask? Because that's the, the kind of the third way between mask and non-mask. Oh, I didn't think of that. Uh, I never saw one in real life. Yeah. Never, never seen one. Um, did you? I don't think I have yet, but... 
I'm thinking, like a normal mask, or are you talking about these? No, like, uh, yeah, like you're about to go and um, mow the lawn at the park, you know, like when, you, when you've got a grass strimmer, and they wear these... Uh, ah, those things. Uh, these full but, face guards, but they're see-through completely. Yeah, and besides the fact that they don't block, don't really block aerosols, apparently, which there seems to be stronger and stronger evidence that actually that's one of the main ways that the virus... Um, is being spread, but I don't want to spread misinformation now. But uh, fake news, man. Fake news, exactly. But there seems to be it's a very, a very interesting art uh, article that came out. Actually, we can maybe add it to the uh, to this video, unless we get blocked by YouTube for <laughs> spreading <laughs> false information. Um, no, a very interesting article by various scientists that are petitioning and. Uh, the CDC in the United States had actually published briefly that aerosols are uh, a big a big chunk of, of how things get spread, and then mm -hmm. they retracted it. And anyway, these uh, winds, uh, whatever you want to call them, these black windshields, uh, that's windshields, quite extreme. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I saw a few um, at the city airport or at the train station at, at the very beginning of the pandemic mm -hmm. um i haven't seen them since mm -hmm. but that's yeah that that would work but it wouldn't protect the people but yeah in let's, theory but i think let's, let's also... put that aside it's not what the topic sure. is about sure we don't want <laughs> we don't want third ways we want a or b i think also case, when they steam up and you look like you you should be carrying a, uh, a chainsaw yeah yeah so, uh, <laughs> in terms of the Sort of the of the, the, the rapport, the, it doesn't doesn't help so much with that. Right. But look, I mean, what what other options do we have? If uh, if the if the face masks help, or if, if the government says that the face masks help, then uh, I'm I'll be putting it on and I won't be paying four hundred euros for having it having it off walking around. Although I'm not sure how much that's being enforced so far, because I, th I don't know if that's all of Italy or just in Rome. Right now it's in Lazio, not in Rome, in the whole region of Lazio, Sorry. which Rome is part of. Mm -hmm. um, and today there were um, talks, or there were mentions of the government thinking about steps of nationalizing the the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I don't know if it's kind I mean, of masks. Ridiculous. Masks seem to be helping somewhat especially sure. if both parties are wearing your masks if they're wearing the right kind of masks and if they are wearing them properly not nose over or nose under you know uh, i see that a lot <laughs> people walking by with the with the nose uh, popping out um completely ridiculous <laughs> but yeah uh, but if you let's assume everybody wears the mask there's there's there are these little minor problems let's say in the end it's temporary we hope and second of all uh it's you know you have to ask a few times excuse me can you re please repeat what uh, it's crazy somebody, yeah, somebody, said, some, somebody said to me somebody said to me the other day that actually talking with a mask on all day made their face feel really tired because even if you're even if it's just a few grams like you have to be sort of lifting and moving the material of the mask every time that you move your mouth. Oh, I would that like can make to a see difference what, after five or ten hours, eh? Oh, I would like to see where and how these people wear the masks. I mean, it sounds a bit extreme. I mean, what, what's, what's getting my go overall is that we might not know if this is the best solution for years, right? Yeah. But at least let's be consistent, which means no. You can't take your mask off in public if you're going to smoke. I don't know how then you can smoke because you can walk. You have to walk around with it on, but you can take it off to smoke. Right. Well, that makes no sense to me if you're going to be consistent. Right. You can walk around. You have to walk around with a mask on, but as soon as you sit down with friends and have a drink and have something to eat, of course you have to take it off because you can't feed yourself through your ears. So what's the point of walking around the rest of the day with a mask if you're going to sit next to people and take it off when you're walking around potentially on your own all day and you could be fine for taking it off when you're on your own do you know what i mean it's just that that, that just drives me nuts because yeah. if you're going to be wrong that's fine in terms of uh, contagion and whatnot I, th that's up in the air right but let's just be consistent so we can actually tell if this works or not and then adapt because at the moment you 
I could be walking around with it on all day and then we could go out for a drink later and we'll take it off and cough and all over each And other. that's fine legally, I know. And you can also go running with uh, without a mask. Right, uh, when you're breathing in, heavily. In, in small parks, in close proximity to other runners and all that, yeah. I guess uh, they're trying to strike a balance because you're right, it's maybe not the best solution we have, but it's the best option we have, a solution we have in this moment because we don't know what else to do in despite uh, staying staying in avoiding other people of course the distance distancing um, method and uh, wait we're waiting for a vaccine if that ever if that ever gonna you know come out on time and in the right amounts but um, I guess they're just trying to they're just trying to strike a balance between I mean of course they could say if you leave your house you must have wear a mask and that's it and all the bars and you know, restaurants uh, have to close. And and so they have to strike a balance now between A, business uh, being able to continue and B, also not giving us the uh, idea that our freedoms are too much restricted because there's a lot of restrictions we have right now. And so a lot of people are already thinking that there are some conspiracies going on and that the government is using this to restrict our liberties from now on forward, you know? Mm. And this is just a, a... an excuse to li- limit our freedoms forever or something like that. And so I guess the government has to strike a balance between not having the pop- population A, go mad, uh, and B, revolt against the government. And so I guess that's 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 where these inconsistencies um, come from. And also maybe, yeah, I guess that's mainly why they do what they do. Like him. But that was interesting. It's nice to see you without a mask. Same with you, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, folks, subscribe. Talk soon. Bye bye. Ciao. Why are we making these podcasts? Because three heads are better than one. We'll combine our experiences and research on engaging topics to learn a bit more each time. Enjoy the chat and improve our own communication skills in the process. Innovation comes from the ability to correlate information between different realms of knowledge and we all have very different realms of knowledge between the three of us. Why the Hydra you ask? In archetypal mythology, dragons guard piles of gold. Overcoming fears can bring great rewards. What you most need is often where you least want to look and we won't shy away from the fire to challenge each other and reach that goal. What's in it for you, listener? Learn, laugh and love. Get involved and join us on this adventure.